We have an update tonight on this blue-eyed little girl we've dubbed Baby Hadley. When we first brought you her story last week, she was headed to Duke University in hopes of halting the rare genetic disorder called Crab A's disease. It's taking her skills one by one. At 15 months, she was at the developmental stage of a two-month-old. Now her parents have learned she's only at one month. Britton Follett tells us why Hadley's parents flew her back to Oklahoma without the good news they were hoping for. Mom and Dad are smiling, while Hadley still can. She's smiling, she's laughing, and, and we're cherishing every single one of those. Because they don't know when the smiles will stop. A couple of months ago, Hadley had no problem posing for the camera. Now, she can't even lift her arm. They told us that she was um, too far progressed into the disease that um, if we did decide to go ahead and go through with the transplant, she would be in a vegetative state. So the decision was up to mom and dad. That's not who Hadley is, and, and that's not how we want her to be remembered. The risk was a lot higher than what the reward would have been. And, you know, and, and, you know the quality of life is a lot more important than the quantity. Thank you, Lakeza. It wasn't easy, but Hadley belongs in their arms. It was just like coming up against a, you know, another wall, you know, and just, just we we're, we we're upset pretty bad for that day. We went and mm -hmm. ate, and I don't think anybody really ate too much that mm -hmm. evening. But now they wait for a miracle. We hope to, to someday be back on here and saying, you know, watching her run and play in this park. But they may have to settle for a snapshot to capture that lifetime for a little girl who's captured a lot of hearts. Hadley's parents say they're going to make the most of their time with Hadley. She loves bright colors and lots of activity, so they want to take her to an aquarium and to Disney World. And she is a beautiful little thing, and the parents really seem is. to be amazingly strong through this. They are. It's been amazing just talking to them about yeah. this. Britt, appreciate the story. On October 13th, Hadley will be put on a feeding tube. Hadley has her own website, by the way. It is www.hopeforhadley.com. Thanks, Britt. You're watching News 9 at 10. Back in September, we introduced you to baby Hadley, a 15-month-old who had just been diagnosed with Crab A disease, a rare genetic disorder that caused her to lose her skills one by one, including her smile. Britton Follett tells us why there may be hope for Hadley and other babies. Doctors told Hadley's parents she had between six months and a year to live. There was no cure. She'd eventually lose all of her motor skills. It's been seven months. The smiles only come once in a while now, but Hadley can still send her love. I didn't give me kids. In October, Hadley was put on a feeding tube because she couldn't chew or swallow anymore. I mean, it almost killed her, I think. I mean, just um, after it, her head was locked straight back, her eyes were fixed to the ceiling. Rick and I both thought, this is this is going to be it you know this is she's you know wasn't able to to do much at all she was really really struggling to even just exist basically she so we thought that this was going to be the end of miss hadley but. mom and dad decided to try some new supplements for hadley designed to help her cells communicate better and hadley started moving again as you can see she's trying to sit up right now by herself that's a good girl Okay, yeah, see that was new. She started growing hair, gaining weight, all the things doctors said would stop. We have a long way to go. Yeah, yeah, we have a long way, but we've gone up the hill instead of continuing to slide back down it. For the first time in months, she's even sleeping in the room with her name on the wall. Hey, we're hoping to, to call you guys back and say, come look at her, she's walking. In the meantime... They'll settle for the smiles. With the things that she's doing, we're pretty encouraged that, uh, that her smile will be back. Armed with Hadley's story, Rick and Tara were invited to speak at the State Health Department today. Oklahoma is considering adding screening for Crab A disease to the list of tests newborns are given at birth. If Hadley would have been screened at birth, she would have been a candidate for a bone marrow transplant which would have halted the disease before it started. Back to you. All right, Britton, thank you. Newborn screening for Crab A is $150. The Lorgs tell us they learn New York is the first state to make testing for the disease mandatory on all newborns. You're watching News 9 at 10.
Several Oklahomans are beating the odds, and they credit their recovery to a new medical discovery, glyconutrients, a supplement that provides your body with sugars that aren't in your diet. Britton Follett found out it seems to work on a number of different diseases. Britton? When baby Hadley started taking glyconutrients, crab A disease had gotten so bad she was relying on a feeding tube to eat. As the weeks passed, Hadley started gaining weight, growing hair, and trying to sit up. All things doctors said would never happen. In that first story, baby Hadley's smile captured a lot of hearts and may have changed her life. And when I heard the name Hadley, it caught my attention because I have a little Hadley. Nikki saw the story and immediately thought glyconutrients might help. What? Come on. Mom never thought she'd be feeding Hadley with a spoon or giving her a bottle. Rick and I are considering maybe we're overfeeding her. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's, she's grown a lot. She's actually put on several pounds, and she's a lot longer than she was even three weeks ago. There are other moms and dads with the same story. Only 3% live through the type of cancer this six-year-old has. Dad says chemotherapy couldn't get rid of all the cancer, so she started taking glyconutrients, too. Crayley has been cancer-free for two months. She's doing so fantastic. I mean, you watch her run just constantly. She won't walk. She runs everywhere, and she's busy, and she's just not showing that she's going to be one of that number. She's going to be one of the 3%. Ed Polito lost his leg in Iraq. A few months later, it got infected. And six months of antibiotics did not work. And after two months of taking the product from November to January, my infection was gone. Four years ago, Clay was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. Chemotherapy worked, but eventually made him sick. Now he takes glyconutrients instead. We were skeptical. We didn't know. It was very scary to take a child off of chemotherapy, thinking that that could put them, him back into a flare and out of remission. And, but we did it. So did Hadley's parents. She's going to be running next time. We're going to go big. <laughs> we're going to shoot big. Talking's good, but we're going to be running. Running and playing. The glyconutrients are supposed to help cells communicate with each other better and help the body naturally heal itself. Got you. All right, Britt. Now, medical studies say there is very little research to show glyconutrients prevent or treat diseases in humans, and they're not regulated by the FDA. And if you're on medications, you should talk with your doctor before taking these or any other supplements. You're watching News 9 at 10. Welcome back. Over the past few months, we've told you about a number of Oklahomans who say they're beating the odds using sugars. But some doctors are skeptical. And one of the only research teams in the country is right here in the metro. Britton Follett went to find out how glyconutrients work. Since we first told you baby Hadley was getting better taking glyconutrients, my phone has been ringing with people looking for more information. What we found is doctors are looking for more information, too. <laughs> Baby Hadley was only supposed to live another six months to a year. Clay had been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. This soldier had an infection in his leg. Crayley had a rare cancer. Only 3% survive. Baby Kelsey has the only documented case of her chromosome disorder anywhere in the world. All five are taking glyconutrients and seem to be getting better. Dr. Saunders says she does not tell her patients to use glyconutrients, but several have asked about them. So she started reading up. So it's felt that these glyconutrients are helping our body work more naturally like it's supposed to by making the proteins work the way they're supposed to. And so they're boosting our immune systems in a more healthier way. Researchers say sugars are basic building blocks. Our body is supposed to produce them naturally, but some people do not. That's where some believe glyconutrients might help. Dr. Cummings is one of the only scientists in the world who study the way sugars work in our body. But we know that defects in the ability to make glycoconjugates are associated with many human diseases. So it's quite likely that if an individual is deficient in some aspect of carbohydrate metabolism, that some um, nutritional supplement might help in that case. Researchers say glycobiology is a new concept and not enough studies have been done to prove there is really a need to give your body extra sugars by taking supplements. There are doctors who are actually using these on patients to, to see what their effects are. 
Good and bad. I'm skeptical, but in a healthy way. You know, I, we need to see more information. More studies need to be done uh, by researchers who do not have a stake in it. Dr. Cummings says he'd like to see a case study done on baby Hadley. She's gaining weight, rolling over, can eat and drink out of a bottle. All things doctors said she'd never do again. That's, that kind of story is remarkable. Um, and it may be, you know, within there is the germ of an idea. What may be happening? These families say a study will not be necessary. They're already sold. And the doctors we spoke with say taking glyconutrients will not hurt you. They're just sugars. But they say it's too early to tell whether they are effective in healthy people. Back to you. All right, Britton. And Dr. Cummings tells us the Food and Drug Administration has talked with him about glyconutrients. At this point, they have not been approved by the FDA.